Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden in Mid Michigan and it's a zone 5B. Um, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has recently subscribed and uh, joined this channel. It's great to have you. Um, I certainly enjoy seeing all of your comments and responding to them. Everybody's up to a lot of fun. So if you do like my videos, please give me a thumbs up, like uh, this video, subscribe to my channel, join our community, and uh, even hit that notification bell that'll let you know whenever a new video comes out. So today, I am just back from um, being away for about four days and um, so there's some things I want to do in my garden. Actually there's a lot of things that I want to do in my garden. Um, but today I'm just going to take you around as I do a little bit of cutting back and uh, show you how I do that and talk to you a little bit about some of the things you guys have been asking me over the past few days. Alright, let's get started. Alright, some of you guys are going to holler because you're going to see me cutting off some blooms that are still left here but it's time for these Hesperus matronalis to be cut back. So I am literally cutting them all the way back down to the ground. And what they're doing because they flopped they start to cover up other things and um, there's probably only a couple days left of bloom so I figure while I'm out here I'm going to um, just get them going and get them out and move them along. You can see this one right here is smushing this little barberry um, so it's getting no light and then there's a salvia also in front of it there that is getting a bit crushed. So it looks pretty brutal and uh, there will appear to be nothing left of it but um, really quickly it's going to flush back out. I have another one over here that I'm going to do but first um, I want to address this pulmonaria because we're going to do this uh, pulmonaria edge that I have right here. So after uh, pulmonaria are done blooming, the easiest way to deal with it is to um, cut them back. So a lot of people don't um, like this because it does put a little bit of a hole in your garden for a little bit of time. But again, that's why I like to plant so many plants in my yard. So I'm going to try to show you from the front so you can see better, but honestly, I'm cutting it back completely. Um, and some people may want to wear gloves with these. One of the reasons why the rabbits and deer don't like them is because they have um, some little sticky, I don't know, they're like hairs on them. And um, that makes them feel a little bit prickly, so if you have uh, sensitive skin, you might want to wear gloves while you do them. The deer and rabbits don't like the feeling on their tongue, so I don't have to spray these like I have to spray some of the other things. And so these will take maybe, um, in a few days actually, I'll probably start to see some new leaves coming up. And then the rest of the year, they're just a beautiful foliage plant. Now these can be divided uh, if you like to divide them. They're very hardy. I think they're hardy probably down to zone three, um, but certainly they're incredibly hardy here. And um, if you divide them, just beware that they um, do not have very deep roots. So almost every time that I divide them, I find that they flop. And uh, after they flop though, um, they'll come back. They'll look just fine. All right, so let's get a closer look at this one here. Um, you'll see this one actually is starting to put out some of that beautiful foliage uh, in the center. So I'm just going to kind of cut around that for this one. Um, this spring has been so weird with the weather that um, plants are reacting a little bit differently than normal. And I may just have not caught this one as early on in the process. If I had caught it last week, I'd have cut it all the way back. But those are, that's what the leaves look like when they actually flush out. So that's a nice way for you to see that. And 
And even if you accidentally cut the leaves, it will push some more out. But there you can see what those look like. They're very pretty. Okay, here's another Hesperus matronalis that is, again, flapped over. We're going to cut that straight back to the ground, too. And all of this will be going into my compost bin. It'll make great compost. You can hear some bees in here. They do like this plant. Um, one thing too about these plants is if you have humidity or very wet springs, which I often do here, it uh, didn't happen at all this year, but if if you do, don't be dismayed if they look a little bit mildewy um, after they bloom and get cut back. I'm trying to see if I can show you anything like what they look like. Sometimes they get brown and look a bit like this uh, or sometimes even look a little bit worse. Don't worry about it. Just cut them all the way back. They will come back. Again, I know it looks brutal, but you can do it. I promise. I do my best to try to clean up my gardening as I go because I don't really like to have a giant mess after I'm done to clean up. It seems like less, don't ask me why. Okay, so you can see that some of these were in different stages of growth at the time that I've cut these back. And so if you decide, um, and it's a personal preference, if you decide that you don't like to have holes in your garden, you can wait until the leaves start to come out like some of them have. But um, to me, it is much faster and easier for me to just cut them completely back. So I try to cut them just before they start putting out their new growth and that way I don't have to worry about cutting off any leaves and when they flush out they look nice but you can see how that has really opened up this bed and now some of the salvia that I have planted in here will start to take more of a center stage and uh, those small barberry bushes are going to be able to uh, get a little bit more sunlight and air and will be much happier. And the same goes for this hydrangea over here. It will be um, a little bit more room and then uh, those will start to flush out again and it will look gorgeous. And I will show you that as we um, go through the summer.
So now all I'm going to do is uh, cut back these bleeding hearts. Uh, some people will leave them for their foliage, but um, I think that they're blocking out some of the things that I would rather have and it makes things a little bit too dense and it's good to have a uh, nice airflow in your garden. So again, I plant densely, but I plant for multi-season interest. So what that means is that there's something that is coming behind each plant. So even though I'm cutting these back, there's a beautiful hosta that's going to um, fill over that space. And um, there is lots of vinca, and uh, there's two small boxwoods on either side here as well. And in no time at all, you will not even know that this plant really existed. And we're going to do that for a couple of bleeding hearts. There's another one right over here. And now the black, uh, excuse me, the lemony lace elderberry here can take center stage. I'm going to go into this hosta here because uh, some of them got freeze damage early and this leaf looks really ugly. So I'm just gonna cut it all the way back down to the center here. Make sure there aren't any other ones that I want to cut off while I'm here. Okay, this um, Yellow River is definitely um, got a lot of freeze damage on its leaves, so I am gonna cut a lot of these leaves off. It's got enough other ones that uh, it can get plenty of nutrition from the sunlight still. But these have gotta go. They're so not good. And it will look much healthier. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. You can leave them on if you want, but I just don't think they look very nice. see all of those are just partial leaves. So I'm going to do the same thing for these hostas here. These are uh, Patriot hostas. Uh, they're a really great addition. Um, they have a, a little bit more upright habit than some hostas do. Um, and they'll get much larger. These are some that I have divided a great deal over time. Um, and they definitely light up the shade because they have a more white look than many hostas do. I don't know, perky might be a term for these hostas. <laughs> and I'm just seeing some small weeds in here. 
Never let a weed you see go without pulling. They only get bigger and make more. And this chive is flapped down to the ground, so I'm gonna cut this one off. And now you can see on here, I'm just pulling the leaf away from the rest of them and then cutting right down all the way by the stem. One of the viewers commented that my husses don't appear to have much slug or snail damage because they don't have holes in them. And um, I'm wondering if it has something to do with the liquid fence that I use and if the slugs and snails, like the rabbits and deers, do not like the taste of it. So it's worth a shot if you have that problem. Good to do this kind of thing now before it gets too late in the season so that they don't have as much energy and growth power. At least in my zone, once you get past June, things have pretty much filled out for the year. Whenever I'm out and about in the garden, I just keep going. I just keep doing whatever else I see that needs to be done. And this wajila right here has some dead uh, branches on it and it's a little bit leggy. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim its, um, its branches back a little bit because I, um, I'd like it to be a little bit bushier. And that's just kind of, you know, sometimes you have to do these kind of things when you buy plants on sale like I do. So these hestas got disfigured by the ice here. Um, the tips, um, as they come out, got stuck. And so I came out and pulled all the tips off that were brown and dead, but then now I need to come back and just get the disfigured leaves off. But they're starting to come back. It's, they're looking much better. Just got a lot of leaves that are funny looking right now.
Normally these would be much bigger, but every year is different in the garden. Okay, so this azalea um, definitely got a little winter damage as well. And so I'm just pruning it back to where there are some nodes. Um, and then I'm also looking for where there is dead wood. Whoops. It's all right. Um, and cutting the dead wood off. So this one I'm gonna cut all the way back. And this one you can see also has no leaves and no new buds on it. And that's the important thing, you know, you wanna wait just long enough so you can tell what's gonna grow and what's not. So I'm at the point right now where um, if new growth hasn't come out on something, I know that it's probably not. You just have to get to know your climate and how things grow there and it's something that you learn over time um, or you can ask people um, who live near you who have gardened for longer than you. Um, they're always happy to share that information. Gardeners like to help each other. It's one of the things I notice is sometimes when I don't know a name of something everybody jumps in on the comments and helps each other out. And, uh, it's fantastic. Okay, that looks a little better. It should start greening out soon as well. I think I'm going to take a couple tips off over here just to help keep the shape. It did just finish blooming, uh, which is the perfect time to come in and prune your azaleas so that they still bloom the next year. You don't want to, you don't want to trim them too late in the season or you'll cut off the blooms for next year and that's no fun. Let me look at it from that side. Okay. Looks much cleaner. Now I have this um, red bud here. It's a Circus canadensis and you can see it's got a bit of freeze damage on it so I'm just going to come back. I mean this whole thing did not come back so I've got almost it's like almost all new branches on here. So I have to see what's happening down in here. All right this is coming out where the stem is so if you want to see where I'm going to cut I'm going to cut right here because this is coming up from the back. And I got to be careful so that I don't damage that new growth there. Okay. Pull that stake out since it's doing no good with the new stuff. And then we have uh, this one here that is going straight up. And that one I'm going to cut back all the way here because also it's doing no good. Now I have a small branch to the side over here. This one's a little bit trickier. You can see the last growth point on this is right here. So I'm going to clip right after that. And I'll show you what it looks like now. As you can see, you don't want to leave too much bud beyond it, just or too much um, branch beyond it, but just enough to protect uh, the tree. All right, I got a little another bleeding heart in here. I want to cut back so this geranium can have a little more room. Um, and it's much bigger this year, so. 
what I tend to do is fill up my beds with what I call a filler plant while other plants are smaller. That way um, I make sure that no uh, little seedlings or whatever are um, taking over when I want real plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out this geranium macrophyllum that is in here because that's what I was using here as some of the hookahs um, were coming out and as this was getting bigger. So um, that helps to give it a little bit more room, a little bit more breathing room as well. I'm also just going to pull out this hosta. I'm just talking a little bit about plants that I had as filler plants. But I'm going to pull this hosta out as well. Um, and this, this is probably what I consider to be my junkiest hosta because it doesn't have any special variegation on it or anything. It's just green and it multiplies readily. <laughs> so it's something that I do as a filler plant. Again, it looks better than weeds and it holds a place. So that's just going to go in the back of that bed over there. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this garden maintenance video. Um, and I really enjoy sharing them with you and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye.